2023 is upon us and with a new year means we're probably going to see some trends from 2022 continue and hopefully some die out. What are some that you should pay attention to in your business and what are some that you should try to avoid as much as humanly possible? What's up guys? Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. And today on Shop Talk, we're going to be taking a look at some of those trends over the last year and maybe you know trying to parse out some you should pay attention to some you should try to avoid but before we do make sure you like subscribe and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video let's get into it okay guys so as promised today on shop talk we are going to be looking at the year ahead, 2023, and looking back at the year that just passed, 2022, and hopefully making some predictions for the year ahead. And like I said, looking at some things maybe you should be focusing on, and maybe some things you should be trying to avoid. 2022 for a lot of us, um, from what I gathered reading the Practical Machinist forums, you know, from paying attention on Instagram, from the people I talked to, seems to have been a better year than some of the years previous of course you know we had uh some fairly substantial issues over the last couple of years i don't know if you pay attention but we had a pandemic that really messed things up for a lot of people so 2022 seemed to be a very good year um there have been a lot of threads on this on the uh, practical machinist shop management and ownership sub forum uh, about guys talking about this last year and that's kind of what inspired this and some people trying to make some predictions for the year ahead. You know, do you think it's gonna slow down? What do you think is gonna happen with this and that? So that's kind of what we're talking about here today. I think there have been some very exciting trends that have popped up in the last year that I'm hoping are going to continue. I have also seen some things that are not so good when it comes to trends. And we're gonna kind of go through some of them a little bit. And I just wanna point out, I'm not an economist, uh, I'm not a future teller, I'm not Nostradamus, so we're gonna try to stay away from the big macro trends, uh, especially involving recession and all that kind of stuff because frankly guys, I, I don't know any more than you guys do, I think you know that. So we're gonna try to stay away from that, maybe try to focus down on a little bit more granular stuff. So to start off, I'd like to highlight some trends that I thought were interesting for this from this past year and that I hope to continue seeing grow in the coming year in 2023. The first one is reshoring and work coming back. This is something I've talked a lot about on uh, the Practical Machine Shop Talk series because I think it's incredibly important to not only pay attention to, but to advocate for. Uh, this is something that I think is not worth, or sorry, I should say, it's not enough to just hope this happens, but I think it's something we all should be actively pushing for. So it's something I do think is going to continue in the coming year. Um, as a North American, as I've said before in some other videos, over the years, it's been very disheartening as someone in the manufacturing space, clearly, to have seen so much work go overseas. And it's not out of some kind of dislike from overseas manufacturing, it's not anything like that. It's that the North American manufacturing industry and Western manufacturing industry really took a massive hit and we lost the ability to develop a lot of things and produce a lot of things here. Over the last years, we've definitely seen that rebuilding. Um, you know, in the States, you can see a lot of investment happening right now in manufacturing, same with here in Canada. Uh, I'm seeing more stuff being done here than ever before in the last 10 years, let's put it that way. Not more than ever before, but more than recently. And it's, it's something that I think is going to continue. With a lot of the big companies, we did see them go and move production overseas. You know, we've talked about it in the late 90s, uh, late 80s, early 90s, into the 2000s. And at first you had to be a very, very large corporation to make this worth it. Um, you know, before the internet was a huge thing, if you wanted to have overseas manufacturing, you pretty much had to have an overseas office in that country to manage and coordinate that kind of production. And as the internet and, you know, connectivity and all this stuff has developed, We've seen, unfortunately, that barrier to entry for companies to get work done overseas in lower cost areas, drop and drop and drop. You know, it used to be if you had, used to have to have an overseas office, now you have to have a cell phone and an app to be able to upload a couple of drawings and some specs and hope your part comes in time. 
that's how low the barrier to entry has gotten. You don't need to get 10,000 parts done in a run anymore to make it worth it, or at least, you know, in the last five years, now that's kind of changed. Now you could send two or three parts to a country that is 10,000 miles away and it needs to come on a container ship or by air. And you can get that one or two parts done at a cost that could be comparable, if not a little less, than getting it done at the shop down the street. This has made it incredibly difficult for Western manufacturing to compete uh, because you're dealing with a matter of price point that, you know, if you pay your guys a living wage, if you, you know, give them time off, if you're doing all this kind of stuff, it's very difficult to compete with companies that aren't constrained by those ethics or moral regulations or legal regulations. They can treat people however they want. You know, uh, a shop with air conditioning and paid vacation can't compare, compete with price point with a sweatshop. It, it's just, it's economics. And as much as COVID was an absolutely horrible experience for the entire industry, and of course, you know, all the other ramifications of the pandemic, you know, the lives lost and all that, if there's one little thing at least we can look at and say, mm, maybe there's one good thing that came out of it, was that it identified for a lot of companies that do overseas manufacturing, that these supply chains that we take for granted, you know, you don't think about shipping until it becomes a problem. These supply lines are a lot more fragile than people thought. And when you had areas closing down, when you had shipping disruptions, when you had the price of shipping containers go up 10,000%, all of a sudden, even if that comes back down, it has highlighted for a lot of these companies that have been chasing the bottom dollar, that maybe there's more to their supply chain than just bottom dollar. Things like reliability, things like quality, all of a sudden are becoming a lot more important. So if we can see one very small glimmer that has come after the pandemic, it's that we're seeing a lot of companies come and reshore. And the reason why I think this is a trend you should pay attention to in the coming year, 2023, is that I know there are shops in my area. So I'm in Newmarket, which is very close to Toronto. There's a lot of manufacturing around here. There are shops that for the last 10 years that I've been doing some kind of sales or you know business networking that would never give me the time of day because they're huge companies they do offshore work. We just don't have a place unless it's really rushed small work in their supply chain. We're seeing them come back. And if you have this kind of scenario in your area where you're manufacturing, even if you've been going for the last 10 years trying to get in those companies and getting nowhere, now and in the coming year is the time to keep making your sales calls, keep introducing yourself, keep going out and reaching out, even if they said no three years ago, because you don't know what may have changed with their supply chain. Um, you don't know what new people may work there that are trying to bring things back. I know one of my customers who traditionally has a very high overseas mix in their work is now doing case studies and examining how to bring back something like 90% of their manufacturing to Canada. So now is the time in the coming year to really not only pay attention to this, but work on developing this into your business because it's a huge stream of revenue you can bring in. And also it's gonna help North American and Western manufacturing rebuild itself. So that's the first thing I think you should pay attention to in 2023. The second trend that caught my eye this year that I thought was very exciting, it's a little more granular, but that is the combination of additive and subtractive machines, machining centers in the same machine. So additive machining, when we're talking additive machining in layman's terms, we're talking 3D printing. But 3D printing with metals, plastics, uh, composites, super alloys in some cases, you know, the Hasseloy and the Inconel. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about additive machining. And when I talk subtractive machining or traditional machining, we're talking about machining, the kind of machining we do. Using end mills, drills, you're taking material away. And the first time I saw these two kind of approaches combined in the same machine was when we were in 2021 down in Connecticut, we went to the Connecticut Center for Advanced Technology, CCAT. There's a video of this on, on uh, Practical Machine. It's amazing, there's two videos I think, amazing videos, amazing place. Those people are doing some really, really cutting edge work across manufacturing, you know, from X-ray scanning to 3D scanning to uh, non-destructive uh, non testing all the way into crazy 3D printing, machining, combinations of all these approaches, really cutting edge stuff. And one thing that caught my eye when I was there, they had a big machine, I think it was a DMG Mori vertical mill. And you know, it had your tool holders and your end mills. The other thing it had in it 
was a additive head. So this thing could go and 3D print a part, and then in the same machine without having to change setup or anything, can bring in an end mill and you could machine that part down to spec exactly as you needed to, just like taking that part from an additive machine and putting it into a mill. The reason why that was exciting to me was, it's hard to say guys, but when 3D printing first came out, I think a lot of us in the traditional machining space, I don't want to say we got scared, but there was definitely a little bit of, oh, this is a big shift that now, now all of a sudden you can 3D print metal, you can 3D print parts. Um, a lot of us thought that this was, or at least had the potential to replace a lot of traditional machining approaches. And then I think as time kind of went on, I think that 3D printing has to this point really found its niche. Um, there are a lot of companies that do 3D printing and additive machining that are doing absolutely amazing, you know, crazy innovations in aircraft type stuff, aerospace, um, you know, the ability, ability to do internal cavities. But I think it's kind of found a bit of a niche. And a lot of the guys who may have invested early and just brought a 3D printing machine into their shop early in the game, kind of found themselves with a bit of a solution in need of a problem. Um, you know, what we have it now, what do we do with it? And I think aside from the ways that it's been found, I feel like this kind of technology, the combination of additive and subtractive in the same machine is really a way forward that's gonna bring it into more shops and see a lot more versatility with it. Um, when we were down at IMTS this year, we talked to the Meltio guys. And that's kind of the same thing I'm talking about where you see an additive head inside a traditional mill. Theirs was inside a Haas vertical mill. And it was a little more geared towards consumer. And when I say consumer, I mean manufacturing consumer in terms of not experimental research and development. This is a consumer product that you could buy, bring into your shop and put that on your floor to use. So I think we're gonna see this continue in the year ahead for sure. And I think it's worth paying attention to. I. You still have to have an application for it, but seeing this technology come into the space where now I can see an application for it aside from doing strictly 3D printed stuff, I think is gonna be important to pay attention to in the coming year. The third thing to watch in 2023, in my opinion, is the consolidation of a lot of small brands into big brands. Um, we've seen this a lot over the last two years, actually, at least I've kind of noticed this. And that's you're seeing a lot of the big tooling brands or CamCAD software brands or you know bigger corporations that have multiple tooling brands and manufacturing type brands underneath them buying up smaller brands. So either they're buying up smaller manufacturers or they're buying up the specialty manufacturers or you see uh, tooling brands buying CAM software brands and, and so forth. You're seeing consolidation right now and why, while a lot of people off the bat would kind of go, ooh, I don't like that because the freedom of choice may feel more limited. I personally think this is a very good thing and something to, if not pay attention to, it's something to watch a little bit. The reason I think it's a good thing is I think there are a ton of really fantastic smaller companies out there. You know, uh, ML manufacturers or software simulation people that just don't have the market availability that you wish they could have. You know, there's certain brands that I wish I could bring into my shop to try out, but it's just too difficult to get them here. I'd have to order them somewhere. I'd have to pre, it's just, it's a whole thing. Seeing some of these brands get absorbed into the bigger brands is a good thing because they're probably not gonna get killed off. You're probably gonna see better availability of more, more types of tooling, better integration. So the CAM software brands that are combining with um, tooling brands you're now starting to see the ability to pull entire tooling sets into your CAM software. And then when you're programming, you already have your tooling optimized the way that manufacturer thinks you should run it. You're already getting optimized manufacturing, uh, sorry, uh, optimized machining tool paths to use those tools. It takes a lot of the guesswork and trial and error out of this kind of stuff. So I think seeing this going forward is gonna be important. The other thing with the small brands getting absorbed is if you have a small tooling brand that you really like and you really like their end mills and you know you see it get bought up by a bigger company the good news is a their production is probably going to go up so you're probably going to be able to get more of those tools but the other thing is that technology that you like 
you're probably gonna see integrated into more types of tooling that's available to you or more types of whatever it may be. So I think this is actually a good thing in spite of how people may initially kind of look at it. And I do think it's something you should watch in 2023. I don't wanna to spend too much time on negative trends or bad things in 2023 or things I've seen kind of in the last year. But I do think it's worth mentioning a couple of them. The first one is aggressive salespeople. Uh, I think the pandemic, we're gonna talk about that again because we're kind of past it. I know it's still ongoing, but whatever it may be. I think that whole economic disruption that happened really put the fear of God into a lot of companies and they put a lot of pressure on their salespeople. And, and I get it, you know, it, salespeople typically work on commission. They need to go out and sell. They've had a bad couple of years. They need to feed their families. I get it. That said, I have never seen, as in the last year, such pushy and aggressive salespeople calling, coming into my shop, whatever it may be. I've never seen this before. I've seen a lot of it in the past years, but I've never seen so much of it compacted into one year as I have, especially in the later half of 2022. Unfortunately, you know, like I said, we're not gonna talk too much about economics and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, if you're paying attention to the news, they're saying that recession might be coming, we might be in one, who knows. Unfortunately, I do see this continuing through to 2023. And the reason I bring it up is that if it's gonna get worse, if it's gonna continue, make sure you are being respectful if you're doing sales. This is not the way to go get more business, guys. It will damage you in the long run. If you are a um, machine shop looking for work or manufacturer looking for work, please do not fall into this trap. It may seem attractive that if you keep pushing on people harder and harder, you might get a little bit of drip feed of work or income off it. Eventually it will backfire. It's not a good strategy. And if you have these people coming into your shop, please make sure you are being protective of your time. Remember that no is a full sentence and an answer. Uh, be polite as you can, but firm. You don't owe anybody anything if they're trying to sell you something, okay? The second negative trend to look out for is company bloat. Um, again, trying not to talk too much about macro trends, but if you've been paying attention to the news, a lot of big companies right now are doing layoffs especially in the tech sector. I know it's adjacent to us in manufacturing, but it's happening. A lot of companies are trying to contract because they think something might be happening. And while I do not under any circumstance advise you to start laying people off, I do think now is the time to take a look at your company. Like we said, if 2022 was a great year for you, like it was for a lot of companies, after all the stress of the downturn between 20, 2020 and 2021, companies may have gotten a little comfortable. You might be resting on your laurels a little bit. You may have a little bloat in your company. And that doesn't mean you got too many people. That doesn't mean that you should go lay people off. It means maybe you're not being as efficient with those people as you could be. It means maybe you have not gone and optimized your programs because you're making enough money on them right now that it doesn't matter. Maybe you're not going and trying to get the best pricing on stuff that you can because you know, for now it works, who cares? Now is the time to start taking a look at that before something potentially happens to get yourself in a good position to stop the bleeding quickly should that happen. Something to look for, and again, when it comes to laying guys off, I've said this before, if you lay a guy off, if you're forced to, that's reality, unfortunately. But remember, you want to try to avoid that scenario as much as possible, because if you lay a guy off at your company that knows something, the chances of him getting, or him or her coming back after you, you know, recall them, is negligible. Either they're gonna go work somewhere else or they're gonna leave the trade. And with all the brain drain and all the lack of people we have in the trade right now, we need everybody in the train we can get. So taking steps to retain people and keep them employed is going to be the most important thing you can possibly do should things unfortunately notice that. So that's all I got for the coming year, guys. Thank you very much for all the support over the last year, over the last two years. I hope you guys all have a fantastic 2023. And in the comments below, I would like to know some of your predictions for 2023. What are some good things you think are gonna happen? What are some things that you think people should look out for? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.